This is the setup that I use for marking with my two screens off one computer. I've got my file handler, this is Mike Hayes file handler, Proforma document, mark scheme, students work and an open file system for student material. Today I'm looking at adding handwritten comments to the students work and I'm using a monoprice tablet by far the best value for money at the moment. This plugs into a USB port. Make sure that you install the software before you plug it in otherwise Windows gets a generic driver which doesn't give you all the options. One thing to be aware of, the pen battery holder is a push fit and it slides in and out don't twist it. If you twist it you'll break it and there's a little black arrow on the base here which indicates the right point to slide that on. If it's too stiff then you haven't got it at the right point and remember to take the cover off the battery before you insert it. So the battery clips in there and then the cover slides on. I can locate the right point again. So it's not a twist, just a slide fit and a pressure fit, that's it. And don't leave it resting on the point if it's resting on the point then it's using up battery so leave it flat or stand it in its little holder. The first thing I want to do is to make sure that the tablet is working in Word. This is Word 2013 and I've set up a ribbon with shortcuts to all the pen options. If I go to review and we've got the start inking then this shows that the tablet is properly connected. I can then go and write on the document. It does take a little bit of coordination to make sure that your writing is clear enough. Mine is not particularly clear anyway. We can change the pen. We can rub out if we want. Go back to my pen and note that we've got pressure sensitivity so that if I draw lightly I get a thin line if I put a bit more pressure on I get a thick line thick and thin this makes the writing look much better and you, you can see that there right so everything seems to be working and now we want to look at a document to mark. In order to mark using Word, we need either a Word document, a Word docx, or a PDF saved as images. Word is not very good at importing complex formats in PDF, so we need to save the PDF as an image if it's not supplied to us saved as an image. In order to ensure that the PDF is in an image format, I'm going to open the document in PDF Exchange Viewer and We've got some um, complex formatting that might be disrupted 
um, in Word. I'm going to go to the print to PDF option. So this comes with PDF Exchange. It's a printer to print back to PDF. And at the bottom, we need to ensure that we've got printer's images ticked. So this will save a new version of the same document, but will ensure that it is in the form of images and not the original text. So our PDF is being generated. Now, unfortunately, this doesn't by default send save it to the same um, folder. So we need to uh, make a note of where we save it or move the folder back to where we were before. And I will change the name of this uh, as image. So we've got two copies of the PDF now, and this one I've saved it as an image. And this is the one that I'll load into Word. Now here is the same sample document loaded in Word. It's from this PDF, and at the top we can see as image PDF, the one that we've saved. It's identical to the original PDF, but the disadvantage is that it's now a series of images and it's not quite so easy to work with. First, I want to set up this page and I want to create a page for Proforma for the marks in front of the student's work. And one of the easiest ways to do this is to insert a cover page. And I've created a blank cover page previously, which I'll select. And that is now the place where my proforma will go. I've got the proforma in a separate document, and I can copy that and paste it into the head of the document. So the pro forma is now ready for my overall marks and comments. Some of the content of the student's document is a bit dense. So I want to make space at the side. And I have a macro set up to do this. And it's on the ribbon to create a wider page. So if I click on that, what I've now got is a broad margin down the right hand side. So that is the space for my comments. Now at the moment we're still looking at images and it's not so easy to place our comments directly over an image. We can place them on the page and drag them but it's much easier to use another macro to place an overlay over the page. So if I select this page and click on my overlay, what I've now got is an overlay which allows me to click anywhere on this particular document. And I can add a tick across all my um, more detailed comments at any point. Now I can click anywhere on the page now and add ticks, crosses, I can add a call out, into which I can type a comment. And what I want to do next is to add some comments with the pen and but what we need to do is to add 
a drawing image. It's a little bit of a workaround, but if we don't add our drawing image onto the page, then Word won't offer us the drawing, the inking option. But you can see that the ribbon has now highlighted the inking options again. And if I bring my pen onto the page, um, let's see if we can get let's right click on the drawing click on our pen select one and now we should be able to add our comments anywhere on this page so we can go to the complicated mathematical format that the student has produced in um, handwriting on paper and scanned in and we can produce our own uh, equations my writing isn't very good but with a bit of practice you can improve on my writing style um, and you can get quite fast so if you really want to um, practice then you can get your handwriting back up to normal speed oh, I might have got, is that a 2 there or a Z? Uh, no, it's, it's that symbol isn't it? Um, and so on. So it's quite fast to add your annotations. You can also write your comments if you wish. And I'm going off the screen there, so let's just bring that back up. I prefer, prefer to type wherever possible as my handwriting is not particularly good. Now as you can see my writing is not particularly good so I'm going to insert an equation into a call out. So I'll start the cursor at the point where I want the call out. There's my call out and the cursor is inside the call out. I'm going to insert and select my equation. I'm just going to pick one at random and there's the equation inside the callout. Now I can move the callout around to adjust its location and I can use the pointer to indicate where I'm referring to. I can also edit the equation and I can save the edited equation as another reference equation in the list. It would certainly help if the module teams supplied a library of suitable equations for each course module. You may already have prepared examples as images. These could be placed in a callout simply by dragging them from the file system onto the page. So that's from the file system, released on the page, and there's an image. And again, the call out enables us to move it around and use the pointer to indicate what we're referring to. So on one page you can have a combination of handwriting, formula equations, in callouts, type comments, 
sticks and crosses inserted from the ribbon. We've also got other symbols that we could use and you can add to this if you wish. Again, once placed, these can also be dragged around, so you're not fixing them in place. You can relocate them if you wish. You can delete them if you wish. So let's go back and just pick up the rubber and remove this particular comet. Right. So we're not keeping that for posterity. Review our mark document and then we've got the option to save as PDF. So we're in electronic marking, a folder that I'm using to assemble materials for this video, and I want to save this back to PDF again. Let's move that up so that people can see it. PDF. And we'll save. And then we're previewing that again in PDF Exchange Viewer. Proformer at the top. And here's our page with all the comments. So this is in the format of PDF again. And all the comments that we've added are there and visible as PDF.